This week, I'm with Bob Puccinelli. He's a longtime friend and a mirror lure aficionado. I mean, this guy knows every plug in the product line and has collected most of the old school plugs. But when you start talking gator trout to Bob, he lights up. Well, Pooch, it's been too long since we fished together last. What, like 10 years, dozen years? 12 years, yeah, 12 years, like not that. that you're counting? No, no, not that I know. So we got a good situation this morning. Not only are we throwing our favorite lure to our favorite fish, but we've got a moon that's getting ready to set, and it's gonna set on the tide change, which should be perfect. We, according, according to all the laws of nature, it should be perfect. Well, yeah, I mean, we can only hope, but uh, <laughs> you don't play the game on paper. No. You know, that's, what, uh, that's what they always say. Yeah. So we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. We'll, we'll let the Paul Brown and Miradines do the talking for us. Yeah, we can only hope. We can only hope. They've talked for us before. And they work. And, yeah. I, and we're so. in our favorite body of water to catch speckled trout, which yeah. is right here on the Florida Sports Coast. Yeah. Pasco County, known for some of the best speckled trout fishing on the west coast of Florida. Yeah. Without further so. ado, I think we should hit the button and go. Let's get it on. The Florida Sports Coast, <laughs> believe it or not, is really not known for sports like it is known for the fishing. The fishing in Pasco County is electric. Uh, has an amazing snook fishery for one. So it's got some great offshore fishing. Uh, the red fishing is pretty solid, but when you get into February and March, the speckled trout fishing in St. Joseph Sound is crazy good. All right, broke the ice. Broke the ice. Skunks out of the boat. As long as there's no bananas somewhere in here, we're fine. I don't want to pigeonhole myself. I love fishing redfish. I get, I get turned on by crappie fishing. I get turned on by bass fishing. Permit down in the Keys, forget about it. It's an absolute sickness with me. I just absolutely love them. But, you know, the trout fishing the, on the West Coast here, they're here. They're user friendly fish. I mean, we can get them on top water, we can get them on, you know, a jig. We can, get them on a suspending bait um, and having daughters and having children it's not as tough as catching a snook it, you can i can i can put an artificial bait in their hand and they can have a good time it is amazing you get that moon just in the right spot yeah. and we're right on probably the change in tide too yeah. it is magic time magic time when that happens absolute magic Not my favorite size right here, but back in a former life, <laughs> I, I, I did some stuff with the guys from the CCA in Texas. <clears throat> and their theory was, if you're catching small trout, leave. Leave because? Because the small trout get eaten by the bigger trout. Mm -hmm. He says, yeah, we'd go to bed at night and there's 50 trout in the in the tank, wake up in the morning, go look at the tank, there's 48. And what's, you know, what's happening to the trout? Where are they going? And the, they came to find out that the bigger trout would- Cannibalize them? Yeah, would eat the smaller trout. And so I always thought that was a good- Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, Bobby. We, we're not leaving that. We're not leaving that. No, I, mean, just, I, I, I know that. Every cast, why would I leave? No, no, I'm happy to that. <laughs> If they don't meet your standards, lower your standards. That's as simple as it gets. Dude, I'm fishing with you. How much lower can my standards get? You know, please. Can you can you can you tell me that? I mean, isn't that the truth? 
God knows I love you, but. I'm just gonna let this waffle down in that hole over there. I'm gonna pop another one. I mean, I'm barely bumping it, and they're, they're, they've eaten it on the, on the stop, for sure. One of the big things with me, especially when it, it comes to, to snook fishing and tarpon fishing, and especially in trout fishing, is I love to pay attention to the minors and the majors and the salooner table. And it was definitely uh, synced up for us in this particular episode where our best fishing came on those salooners. If you've ever doubted this, you sh when, you, when you return from fishing one day, if you don't check these things, go look to see when that salooner was and when you were catching fish. And I guarantee you, many times, it's right in line with those salooner tables. I promise you, go check it out. There he is. See, I don't even set the hook, I just... Yeah, look at that boil that I just had there too. Yeah. Boy, they're... Well, that's a good sign right there. That osprey up there right now, if you're searching for a flat and you don't know if, where they are, if all flats, are all flats created equal? Well, they're not. But well, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, just look for the ospreys over a flat. Yeah, and they tell you they everything. They tell you all you. I guarantee you, they're tell you everything there. you need to know. I used to mess with my son and his friends when they were small. We'd be looking for mullet just so we could see if we could catch some redfish. And yeah, lots of times I'd cruise up to an area and I go, you know what, this isn't it. I start smelling and turn. <laughs> I'd wait until I turned into the wind till I could see an osprey on the horizon, and then I would say, you know what, they're going to be on that flat there. At least the mullet are, because I can smell them from here. And they'd look at me puzzled, like, you really smell the mullet from here? We'd go over there and there'd be mullet everywhere. Well, one of the things that that um is kind of cool is if you see ospreys flying over a flat chances are pretty good there's trout on that flat there there's there's life on there that they want to eat and most of the time it's trout so they kind of give they kind of give spots away so just little keys that you learn throughout the years that kind of make things a little bit easier to find fish i mean <laughs> just buried it they, I mean, right now, there's, there's a couple of things that I always see with, with fish and artificials. And I teach it in fishing schools and I teach it in, uh, on Flats Class YouTube. And that is, size and speed of the lure are more important than color, in most cases. I mean, I get a lot of eats if I have the right size bait and no. it's got the right tempo. No, I, 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 would, I, would, I, would, I would agree. When, well, here's the thing. How many different colored topwater baits are there? Oh. And, and what, what do they see? Most of what they see is the silhouette. Exactly. And then maybe the belly color it, in it, certain situations. Exactly. Now, I like, a, I like a brighter bait because I want to see it personally in the water That's, when I'm working it. Yeah, yeah. You, you, said, know. you said you were 62, right? Dude, but I got, hey, when you spend as much money as I did on my eyes, yeah. <laughs> they better work. They're specialized? My specialized. The Italian guys are all the same. <laughs> Man, that osprey is just wrecking. He, look at the size of that mullet or trout he just picked up. Look, he's going to fly right over us. I mean, unbelievable. That's impressive. Is it a trout? Troutski. Look at it. Nice. Man, we're yeah. competing with that? Well, once again, if anyone is ever questioned on these kind of tides, where are the trout, where are the fish, I can't find them, these ospreys, man, they will absolutely tell you. They tell you. They'll tell you if you're in the right area. I mean, it's just, it's, it's simple. Come on, flash, flash, throw it back.
So how long have you been a mirror lure, basically, pro? Because you've been with them forever. You've been with them probably longer than I have, and I've been there forever. Since 85. Because, I mean, you've been collecting those lures since the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, I, I collect... I collect a little different than most. Okay. A lot of folks, I've got some friends in Texas, some of the Texas boys, they want every profile, every, every TT or 52 or 51 ever made, right. every color, everything else. But what my goal has been is to get at least, at least one model of every bait that was made before the year 2000. You know, I love collecting baits just because of the historic value of them. In 1937, Grandpa Harold started whittling these things in his basement. He became a company in 1938, and I have some of those baits, the made out of walnut, glass eyes, hand-pounded lips out of metal. And um, what's cool about them is I know that Eric's grandfather touched this bait, and now it's in my collection. But also have just a tremendous amount of uncatalogued baits also. These baits should not exist. Eric's grandfather, um, Harold LeMaster, was famous for being, I'm not gonna say frugal, but not wasting any parts. So we still have some of these eyes left. We're gonna put them on these baits until the baits are gone. Never made it into the catalog, but got into the fishing realm and since then I've collected you know a number of those so uh, it's a lot of fun I'm still looking for those six extra baits though you know one of these days we'll find them oh like throwing water <clears throat> like what I'm seeing brother throwing water I think what makes this zone so popular with trout anglers is the fact that the seagrass beds are so healthy. They're healthy and you have a nice uh, variation of depth. Everything from really shallow flats to flats that are as deep as six, seven, eight feet deep. And they all, with good water quality, have healthy uh, seagrass beds. This one just pulled out of his mouth. Now it's like in, the, in his flank. This is gonna be fun to take off. Yeah, that's gonna be a good time. Yeah where they yo-yo into you. Mirror Lore has had this, I guess, symbolic relationship with trout anglers for it seems like the very beginning of the brand. Uh, anglers who are serious about trout fishing are typically Mirror Lore fans. Uh, they make every profile, they make every, um, I'm gonna say, plug that accommodates depths from surface walkers all the way to fast sinking plugs that can get 10, 12 feet deep. Uh, so they cover all of the water column. They make a myriad of colors um, that no one would want anything more. And you can even create your custom colors like we have at Flats Glass. There we go. Better fish. Stay on. Yes. Stay on. That is a jumper. Stay on. I like that one. Yeah. Oh, I got one too. <laughs> I'm gonna try to keep mine away from yours. Oh yeah, that's a solid speck right there. I got, I'm hoping I've got a worthy one to match you up here. Mine's actually fighting like a redfish, but we'll see. Nope, big trout. Big trout, he dog boned it. Did he? Good. Oh yeah, it's a good one. Good. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Finally moved far enough down the uh, the zone. Oh ho 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 ho! Don't be doing that. This is where you get off. <sighs> Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Almost like sister fish. Yeah. I mean it. Paul Browns and those big deans. Yeah. Uh, that one there, that's a hoss. Yeah. That no. one is a hoss, bigger than this one. Yeah. Yeah. That is a hoss. 
A little disrespect there, jeez. Woo. All right. All right, that's the way I like to do it right there. We are long overdue. When we move throughout the day fishing with Bob, a lot of the stuff that we shot was over turtle grass, over seagrass. But when the tide started to really flood in and it brought a lot of that, that dead grass to the top of the surface and was making it a little bit, I'm gonna say, tougher to fish plugs with treble hooks on it. Um, I was like, I know a place where we can make a move, and if we run over there, uh, maybe we get lucky and see a cobia or see a few redfish on the shoreline, um, never anticipating seeing big speckled trout sitting on sand. Yes! <laughs> the perfect bend in the line. Can't tell if it's a trout or a red. I think it's a trout. It would make sense it's a trout. I mean, he was laying up there just as pretty as you please. No, maybe it is a little red. I think it is a little red because of the, the tail, yeah. Powerful. No, it's a no, big trout, dude. No, it's a dude. big trout. It's a good trout. All right, trout. I'm gonna put the, put the power pole down. That's and the best trout we've caught. It's not hooked well. That's okay, that's okay. We're gonna get them easy, play them nice. I can get into that front hatch and I can get a net. I can wet it. Better hurry, brother. Yeah, I'm trying to. <sighs> La da! I'll bet you that's a 22 and a half inch trout, 23 inch trout. Sight fishing trout skis. Sight fishing trout. Love it. Love it. When I saw him there, good I was eyes, like, brother. I was like, I know we can catch that one. Yeah. We came upon, on the outside of that flat, several big trout. And there was one in particular that was completely laid up, looking away from us. And we were approaching from it six. Bob had the bow and he made the perfect cast where he just launched it out a good six or eight feet in front of this fish. And immediately the fish reacted, swam up, hit it and ran off. I knew it pleased Bob, but it really made me happy to see that thing happen because as good as he could see it from the bow, with me being on the polling platform, I got quite the show. I think this is the one that sends us back to the ramp. I mean, when you catch a fish like this sight fishing on the pure white sand, and yeah. you, I mean, we're not going to top that. Uh, it's, it's nice. I pretty, re pretty rewarding to be able to do that. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm pleased. One of my, my favorite types of fishing is fishing with plugs, especially when we're fishing for speckled trout. Now, we used, I'm gonna say, a list or a variety of the Paul Brown lures, everything from the Mirrodin to some of the OG originals to the Pro Fat Boy and even some of the original Fat Boy uh, profiles. And all of them caught fish. Now, Bob in particular did really well with our 27 skin series. This is the 27MR in the mullet. And he had an unbelievable confidence level with that that just provided a ton of action on his behalf. He even was sight fishing with it. So for me, when you get an opportunity and you've got that chilly weather and you've got the perfect spring spawning time coming up, if you'll employ these types of baits, you're going to catch some of your biggest speckled trout of the season. We timed it out with the moon and we timed it out with the weather perfectly to be able to accomplish this. Uh, we were both throwing casting rods. We were throwing the Shimano Terramar double X's in the seven foot range. 
Uh, we were also uh, utilizing both Power Pro Super Slick V2 in 20 pound. And we were experimenting with a new fluorocarbon line that hasn't come out yet. So we were going back and forth and we found um, that they both performed equally as well, honestly. So uh, a great day on the water with Bob. Big thanks to him. And hopefully you guys learned a lot with our in-boat instruction on how to utilize or leverage these baits to catch much bigger trout for you this spring. Well, you know, Bob was just one of those old time friends that I haven't had on the show probably in a good 10 or 12 years. So it was nice to get reacquainted and get him out on the water once again and fishing in one of his old favorite tarpon spots, uh, that Tarpon Springs area right there around Anclote because back in the day, he was quite the tarpon angler in that same zone that we're catching trout in. And the Florida Sports Coast, I'm telling you right now, it is still a solid tarpon spot, a solid snook spot, and you saw today, one of the best speckled trout fisheries in our state.